Today we're going to quickly review clef lip and clef palate. Now why are these important? Because if you're thinking about subspecialties like plastic surgery, you're going to need to do embryology, and more importantly, for your step one exam, they prefer to connect embryological development and pathology in relevant clinical vignettes. So this is something that they can definitely use. Now let's review quickly the normal. So the normal, as you can see here in this image, this is the embryological face, approximately fifth week. Not the best, not the best image, but it is a pretty accurate representation of the things that you need to know. You have a frontal nasal prominence, the front and the nose. You have the maxillary process here and here. And this makes sense because this is the upper part of the jaw, so the maxilla is the upper part of the jaw and the mandibular process, which is the lower part of the jaw. And you can see here, there's also a nasal pit, and the nasal pit is just an invagination of the nasal placode, which is ectoderm, that occurs around fifth week. And this is an important step here, because this invagination of the nasal placode forming the nasal pit in the fifth week gives you the medial nasal prominence, here in white, and the lateral nasal prominences, which are also in black. And this is seen on one side and on the other side. Now, why is this important in the pathology and understanding of cleft lip and palate? Well, because as you can see here, in the next two weeks, these maxillary processes increase in size and grow in a medial direction. And this causes the compression of the medial nasal prominences toward midline. As you can see here, these arrows are representing that. And the medial nasal prominences will eventually fuse with each other. And you can see here that they fuse and the maxillary prominences, processes, or prominences, same word, essentially, I apologize if I interchange in between the two, will edge also fuse with the medial nasal prominence. As you can see here, they fuse here. So the fused medial nasal prominences grow downward to give rise to the intermaxillary segment. And it's called the intermaxillary segment because it's in between the maxillary processes that we just had push the medial nasal prominences together to form this one continuous structure. And the intermaxillary segment will go on to form the philtrum of the upper lip and the medial part of the maxillary bone, also the teeth. And that makes sense. As you can see, this structure here is a midline, and it's essentially the philtrum of the nose. And this will continue to form the upper teeth and the medial part of the maxillary bone. So what forms the lateral part of the maxillary bone? Well, it's probably whatever was lateral to these medial nasal processes. And that's going to be the maxillary prominences or processes, right? As you can see, these are going to form the lateral parts of the upper jaw and the lateral part of the upper cheek. So they're going this way. And so what happens with these mandibular processes? It's, got, it's, it's not necessarily the most relevant to this, but just in case that's a, a, one of the possible multiple choice answers on your multiple choice test, you need to know that the mandibular prominence or process actually has nothing to do with cleft lip and cleft palate. It goes on to form the lower lip and the lower jaw and the lower part of the cheeks. Also, we have this here. This is the nasolacrimal groove, and this is just a structure or furrow, I guess you could say, that initially separates the maxillary and lateral nasal prominences. So again, the lateral nasal prominence is here, and this is the maxillary prom, uh, process, and that just kind of separates the two. And you can have cleft uh, palate defects that are also involved in late, the nasolacrimal groove. Um, and this actually, and, and the ectoderm in the floor of this groove forms the nasolacrimal duct, which runs from the medial corner of the eye, as you can see here, to the inferior meatus or opening of the nasal cavity. Um, and following the formation of this nasolacrimal duct, the medial, the maxillary and lateral nasal prominences fuse with each other. So any part, any defect in this can also cause a problem. So essentially the nose, which is what we're kind of interested in here, the nose, which is should be developing in this structure, see, is formed by the frontal nasal prominences and this forms the bridge, so the top of your nose, that's hard, um, and also forms some of the forehead. And the merged or fused medial nasal prominences or processes form the crest and tip of the nose. Again, these are here. 
they fused, fused, and they formed the crest and tip of the nose and the nasal septum. And the lateral nasal prominences, as you can see laterally, form the lateral part of your nose, which are the alae, or the wings, sides of the nose. So hopefully all of that kind of flows together and it makes sense for the moment. Let's, let's kind of compare the normal with what could happen in the development of a pathology such as cleft lip and palate. So as we discussed, the palate is formed by two parts. We discussed the normal. So as you see here, there's the primary palate and it's triangular in shape, triangular in shape, and it is formed by the intermaxillary segment. And we discussed earlier how the intermaxillary segment over here is formed by the fusion of the medial nasal processes that was driven by the growth and movement of the maxillary processes towards midline. Your secondary palate is, it, is essentially just behind the primary palate and it is formed by two shelf-like outgrowths from the maxillary prominences or processes and they are now will be called the palatine shelves or plates because they are outgrowths of the maxillary pr processes. So there's two views here. You see this is the view from straight on. You're viewing the face and this is the inferior view of the palate and this is the anterior and this is the posterior. So the maxillary process right here, this is this, we're taking this view and just looking at it here. So shelf essentially grows out from the maxillary process and you will call this the palatine shelf or plate. And the palatine shelf or plate should fuse in the midline and it should also fuse with the triangular primary palate which was formed by the, what was that? The medial nasal prominences or processes. So in quick review, essentially what happens is that medial nasal prominences or processes are pushed together by the lateral nasal, uh, by the maxillary processes growth and movement midline. You get your intermaxillary segment, intermaxillary segment, and this grows to form the philtrum. Uh, and then your secondary palate is a growth of the maxillary processes, a shelf-like, so literally a shelf-like projection that is supposed to fuse in the midline. So any sort of pathology that you will see as cleft lip and palate is an abnormality of the fusion of these structures. So a cleft lip, so a cleft lip is it means that the, the superior part of the lip in the philtrum was not, did not fuse correctly. So that is a pathology by default with the medial nasal processes because that is what forms the, the lip, the, the top lip. And then the cleft palate, when you view the palate, it can be a pathology involving any of the structures that form the palate. So the intermaxillary segment formed by the medial nasal prominences or processes not correctly fusing with the two shelf-like outgrowths of the maxillary processes or the two shelf-like outgrowths of the maxillary processes, the palatine shelves do not fuse with each other, can cause a pathology of cleft lip. That is why they have two distinct etiologies, but they often occur together, is because the maxillary processes drive the fusion of the medial nasal processes in midline. And if there's, a, if there's a pathology with the maxillary processes, then there will probably be a de definitive problem with the fusion of the palatine shelves that are derived from the maxillary process themselves in the midline. So you often have the occurrence of cleft lip and palate together because the movement and growth of the maxillary processes drives the fusion of the medial nasal processes in midline and it also, the maxillary processes also are the origin of the posterior or secondary palate because they have these shelf-like outgrowths that fuse midline and also with the primary palate. So I hope this was a quick review. It was simple. Understanding embryological structures has always been something complex for me. So I hope that this quick tutorial review was helpful. Thank you.